Hello all my pretties and welcome to another rip roaring episode of Techspert Weekly, officially the worst thing on the internet since that infamous video of James Corden endlessly windmilling. And no, please don't freak out, that isn't actually a real thing at all, it's just a horrifying recurring nightmare that I wake up from every single night, screaming and drenched in what I can only pray is my own sweat. What it basically boils down to is my brain hates me and I hate my brain. That's why I'm slowly killing it with endless Alka Pops and whiskey. Anywho, this week we've once again got the usual unsatisfactory blend of light-hearted tech news followed by a chilly dip in the murky waters of viewer comments. And time is actually really effing tight this week with all the endless launches of shiny gadgets, so what am I still banging on for? Jingle me! Techspert Weekly! So we've had a couple of big launches this week, the biggest one being Spies Spies? It's really straight off the bat that one up. Great job as always. Sky's spangly new telly box. Skyglass, as it's known, comes in three sizes from 43 to 65 inches to suit all tastes, and it delivers all that hot 4K content straight to your face via the internet rather than a whopping great dish nailed to your house. Watching Arsenal wearily capitulate to bottom draw premiership teams in their stupid zigzaggy shirts has never looked better. And of course if Sunderland is ever actually broadcast in 4K as well, you can watch them in glorious Ultra HD, hip hip hooray. Maybe give it another 6 or 7 years and we finally claw way out of League f***ing 1. The Sky Glass tellies all boast built-in surround sound audio with 6 speakers in total, and they come in a choice of 5 colours including pink, if you're an absolute mentalist. They look a bit like them new Apple Macs, except without the stupid enormous chin that would put Jimmy Hill to shame. And apparently Skyglass is the world's first carbon neutral telly, all nice and eco-friendly. So if you're the kind of wazzock who goes and lies down in the middle of the M25 to stop other people getting to their jobs because you don't have one of your own, then happy days. But anyway, I spunked out full coverage of the Skyglass live from the event yesterday, so go check that out for all you need to know. And after literally months of tease, and Google has finally revealed the date where we'll be finding out the little bit that we don't already know about the new Pixel 6 smartphones. And that big day is Tuesday, October the 19th at 6pm UK time, so get that in your diaries, get in a crate of beer and some Murray and Mints, and get ready to have a little Pixel party there, all of your own. New phones, baby, fuck yeah! So what do we know about the Pixel 6 smartphones thus far? Well, the multiple of leaked pics reveal a selfie cam positioned centrally in that OLED screen, as well as Google's first in-display fingerprint sensor. The standard Pixel 6 will apparently sport a 6.4-inch 90Hz panel, while the larger Pixel 6 Pro will boost that to a 6.7-inch 120Hz screen. So yeah, somewhat depressingly, it looks like the Pixel smartphones are no longer going to be so lovably compact, which is a real shame. They were pretty much the last mini handsets remaining, besides like the iPhone mini and a couple of others. Flipping around and stretching right across the arse end is an enlarged camera bump with two lenses for the Pixel 6 and three for the Pro model. That third Pro shooter might well be a mighty 48 megapixel zoom lens with a four times optical zoom, while both of the Pixel phones share a 50 megapixel primary snapper and a 12 megapixel ultra wide angle effort. So you can expect much larger camera sensors than before, so you can expect some serious performance out of these things, and certainly if the software is up to snuff as usual. And speaking of which, these fresh new Pixel 6 generation smartphones will be powered by a fresh new Tensor chipset of Google's own creation rather than a Snapdragon platform, with a serious emphasis on machine learning, which should come in handy for your voice search shenanigans, which obviously Google rates quite highly, and your photography as well. You'll probably have a built-in image processing on that Tensor chipset. And you can also expect much bigger batteries crammed inside of the Pixel 6 and the Pixel 6 Pro as well, which fills my heart with joy. Uh, but apparently Google will not be bundling adapters with either of these smartphones similar to other uh, flagships from the likes of Samsung and Apple. Also this week, Huawei launched some new laptops, including this freakishly enormous bugger here, the MateBook 16. It's big enough to bray a hippopotamus if your hobby happens to be a salt and wildlife with random pieces of consumer technology. Good luck fitting this thing in a backpack though, you would need a bloody suitcase for it. And once again, I've done you a full review right here on Techspert. And this week's other big tech news happened on Monday when Facebook's app suddenly gained self-awareness and realising that they were playing a significant part in the systematic downfall of society while simultaneously making a loathsome android one of the most wealthy beings on the planet decided to selflessly terminate themselves for the good of mankind. Some people took to the few remaining social media services to complain about the outage and absolutely lose their f***ing sh**. 
Personally, I just masturbated furiously over the sight of Facebook's share value tumbling $40 billion in a single day while imagining a single artificial tear rolling down Zuckerbot's plastic cheek. And then it all came back online again on Tuesday, which was a bit of a shame, but that's basically life, isn't it? Just a glimmer of hope, a brief glimpse of a potentially better world for us all to coexist in, followed swiftly by a kick in the crotch as your most racist relatives continue to forward on anti-immigration memes that they saw on Facebook. And on that positively cheery note, it's time to merrily skip our way onto the part of the show that's marginally less enjoyable than slamming your nuts in the car door. It's fewer comments. Viewer comments. That's one of the big news topics we covered last week, in case you missed last week's show. And if you missed last week's show, what are you doing? Why did you not watch it? Go back and watch it, but only after you finish watching this show, because it really f***s up my YouTube algorithms as people just leave midway. But one of the major topics that we covered last week was, of course, Amazon's new Astro robot, uh, which is hitting the US imminently. Uh, and it seems like most Spurtons uh, remain unconvinced by Astro's worthiness. Uh, so Soulless Leftover, for instance, says, what a great way to make people pay Amazon to spy on them. Same goes for those doorknobs. And Yorkshire D says, we carry about cameras and a mic everywhere we go, a speaker mic in a room, and now they develop a mobile camera and a mic in the guise of a robot to sneak up on us and catch us in our more intimate moments. Christ, can you even imagine you're getting it on with your wife, husband, partner, whatever, and then just from the corner of your eye, you see Astro just silently glide into the room and that screen slowly twisting towards you, blank eyes staring, and then maybe just gives you a cheeky little wink. Uh, Stan says, yeah, that's a no effing way for the Amazon Astro when the police show up at your door because they've been watching you after backdooring Astro's camera. Well, backdooring sounds positively filthy. Astro would probably absolutely love it. I mean, yeah, there's no getting around it. Astro does sound like a beatbox and privacy nightmare on wheels. Uh, but apparently can also bring you uh, booze on demand, which makes me kind of want to forgive him. Uh, 909 Rhythm says, I wish they would bring a robotic teddy bear out like the one in the Steven Spielberg movie AI. Uh, yeah, it's been many a uh, many a decade actually, in fact, since I've seen AI. So I can't remember the robotic teddy bear in question, but I'm getting some serious Five Nights at Freddy's uh, vibes off that. Probably not great. AI is the one with Jude Law as like a, a robot prosy or something, isn't it? Yeah, I can't remember bugger all about that movie now. I was always much more of a uh, Robocop Terminator kind of guy. Uh, next up, Somalia says, I love the fact that when the embargoes for the iPhone reviews lifted and I was getting bombarded with iPhone 13 coverage notifications, there was Chris with a smart doorbell review. Uh, yeah, I've got to admit, I do enjoy kicking convention square in the cock. But yes, I promise I will do you fine for a full iPhone review in due course. I just didn't want to spaff it out the exact same time as everyone else on their cat on the bloody internet, basically, because uh, then it just gets lost in a whole lot of iPhone noise. Plus, the first month or so, there's always bugs that just cripple the experience, be it like the Bluetooth not working properly or the Wi-Fi being f***. Or something or other. So uh, I like to leave it at least a month for them to finally work out all these little kinks and then make it sort of vaguely usable. Uh, back on the subject of Death Stranding, which we were chatting about uh, last week, uh, Chabangarang says Death Stranding is really slow at first, but it picks up later. I didn't like the beginning, but I pushed through and finished the game. I enjoyed it for what it was a unique game among the plethora of remakes and sequels. And yeah, I mean, you've got to hand it to Kojima. He's not scared to do something a bit original, a bit kooky. He doesn't just think outside of the box, he like actually just takes the box and f***ing punts it out of the room. I'll, I'll probably try and give it another go, because uh, I've got to admit, I am very intrigued by the setup and everything. It's just I have a very limited amount of time to play games these days, and uh, certainly from what I've seen so far of Death Stranding, it is in the most very literal sense of the word, a walking simulator. And I, I just feel bad sitting on my sofa, walking a dude across hills when I know in my brain somewhere it's like you had pork pies for lunch you should get your ass off this sofa and actually do some real life walking that would be better for you and plus like a lot of games these days they just seem like actual chores like this is basically you're just delivering stuff from one person to another it's like they, they basically fetch quest the game fetch quest was always the worst part of like the bloody zeldas and stuff back in the day that seems to be pretty much all you bloody do in this game and like what's the new one that just came out it's like gas station simulator or something like that did i say gas station stimulator gas gas station simulator where you're literally just running a petrol station in america just tidying up shit and dealing with annoying customers all day they really need to bring out a london expansion to that game because literally all you need to do is put up a sign that says sorry no petrol and that would be it you'd win uh, next up mark sapolo says your description of death stranded should be on sony's website uh, yeah, two hours of watching batshit mental cutscenes followed by ten minutes of walking a dude up a hill. Textbert. 
Yeah, I don't think that's going to make the posters, unfortunately. Uh, Fraser says, No, seriously, my UK home is in Milton Keynes, but Shanghai is my current home. I better not tell you just how cheap a bottle of single malt is here. All right, so you moved from Milton Keynes to Shanghai. Whatever for? Why did you leave the great, mighty MK? You must be seriously missing those concrete cows and all of those bridges by now. Uh, Warwick says, Greetings from the Seychelles. Behave. Uh, Julian says, Genshin Impact, pretty good. Yeah, I gotta admit, it took me a little while to get into it, uh, once you sort of get past the uh, ridiculous GRPG style plot, uh, which, you know, I'm, I can never really <laughs> wrap my head around those things. Uh, but yeah, once you, once you get through all that and uh, get into it, stop building up your experience, it's definitely one of those sort of one more mission kind of games. But yeah, I've been playing it now for about, God knows, 20 hours, 30 hours, something like that. Still couldn't tell you what the story's actually about, something to do with dragons, basically. And next up, John Paul Graham says, I've noticed that you get a small number of people pressing the thumbs down down on your videos. Could Mrs. Brown and James Cordendorf be two of them? Uh, yeah, no, I have noticed that every single video I publish, usually within literally a few seconds of them going live, I get at least three or four thumbs downs every single time, which I guess means that some people that I've wronged in some way have subscribed to my channel just so they can get straight on there and give it a thumbs down as soon as it goes live. And I've got absolutely no idea what I've done to these people, but if it makes them feel better, then fine. Go for it. I guess it's better than, you know, poking dog shit through my letterbox with a stick or a Sunderland special delivery, as we used to call it back in the day. And next up, Volante says, uh, Thanks to your mid-ranged phone videos, it was an easy decision for me to buy my newest phone, the Samsung Galaxy A52s, replacing my OnePlus 6. A OnePlus 6, absolute classic. That's got a really special place in my heart, actually, the OnePlus 6, because that is the first major phone launch that I covered right here on Techspert. The launch happened, I think it was about like a fortnight after I set up the channel. Uh, so yeah, I was fresh faced, fresh, fresher faced, slightly less bald, slightly less grey nose hairs. And yeah, great choice, the Samsung Galaxy A52s uh, 5G, solid or on smartphone, definitely makes you wonder why people spend twice as much on the flagships when, you know, that thing can basically do anything you want. So yeah, glad, uh, glad to be of help. Speaking of uh, like back in the day and everything as well, uh, Ziktek101 says, I don't usually comment on videos as I don't know what to say honestly, but just here to say that I've been your fan from your Recombu days and you've actually picked my comment once in 2018 during Recombu Quickies. Good old Quickies. Uh, yeah, if you used to watch Recombu from back in the day, that used to, it's basically the predecessor to Textbird Weekly. It was a half assed coverage of the week's tech news followed by viewer comments, usually while intoxicated. Great is indeed. Um, next up, SJSTU says, Blippi is just a Timmy Mallet ripoff. At least Wackadee used to show the classic Transformers cartoon. And Mountain Goat Yeti says, Blippi, I just thought that Timmy Mallet had been under the knife, treating himself to a shed load of plastic surgery. Something's certainly been under the knife listening to Blippi's voice. Yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty bizarre actually. I never even made the Timmy Mallet connection in my head until you guys just mentioned it. But yeah, it's like he is basically a, a Mallet ripoff, isn't it? Wackadee, I used to be a freaking classic man. I used to love that show. Um, watched it religiously and now I'm actually struggling to remember anything that happened in it other than him obviously twatting people with that mallet. I think he used to piss about with like a budgie and uh, make things out of used bog roll as well. Like probably a telescope every single week because what else can you really make out of a bog roll? And next up Roman says, a uh, tech related question, who do you think should be the new James Bond? Um, I, I don't really know. I mean, I've not, you know, I like Bond movies, but I've never really been a Bond obsessive. You know, I wasn't one of these guys who got pissed off when uh, Daniel Craig got chosen. I almost said Craig David there. That I mean, maybe he would make a good Bond. I don't know. I think it's probably about time we had a Northern Bond again, because obviously he had Connery. He was the original. Let's bring it full circle. Let's have, a, you know, a Northeastern Bond, uh, you know, maybe slap Robson Green in a tux or uh, Jimmy Neal. Jimmy Neal could definitely work. You know, you could do it like uh, Batman in uh, Dark Knight Returns, where basically, you know, Bond is about sort of 60, 70 years old. His liver's f***ed from all these martinis. He's just huffing and puffing about the place in a baggy tracksuit. You know, f*** it, I'll do it. You know, why not? I'm in fairly good shape. You know, I can do a few push-ups if I'm forced into it. Just cut out the scotch eggs and maybe, you know, a couple less pints a week or something and, you know, I'll be trimming no time. Uh, but better finish up anyway because once again run out of time and this is a great one to end on. Gary says, are your books any good? <laughs> it's, which, never ask an author if their books are any good basically because it's impossible to answer. The thing about writing fiction is you sit down, you think, I've got a great freaking idea. You smash out, you know, this 50,000 word novel or whatever and then you sit back and you read it and you think, this is utter f and then you basically whittle away at it and whittle away and you drink a lot and you f 
fucking cut out a few chapters and you completely rewrite them and then eventually it's in a state where you don't absolutely hate it. And seriously, I had to properly force myself to hit the publish button on the, uh, the Kindle store uh, desktop uh, because, you know, even uh, up to that moment I was like, people are going to think this is f***. And you know, it's one of those completely subjective things. You know, if you read the uh, the reviews of my books on the Amazon Kindle store, you'll see some people really enjoy them. Other people say they basically rather read James Corden's autobiography. I'd say probably the novel I'm most content with overall is Dead Dogs, uh, which you can buy on the, the Kindle store. Uh, otherwise, you can just download my novel Devils in a Different Dress for free. Won't cost you a penny. And if you think it sucks, uh, just just back away slowly from it and uh, and never speak of it again. So anyway, uh, before I collapse in a heap on the floor, uh, let's have a quick look at next week, next week, next week. What the f*** is next week? Uh, next week is a bit of a twat, actually. There's quite a lot of tech stuff going on, so expect a feature-packed Textbook Weekly next Friday. Uh, so it all kicks off on Monday morning, 10 a.m. UK time. The new Color OS 12, based on Android 12, is being unveiled by Oppo. It will be rolled out to a shed load of Oppo smartphones either late 2021 or early 2022, and they will uh, release apparently the full list right then. On Monday, uh, Amazfit is also launching some new smartwatches, so stay tuned for a bit of tasty coverage on that. Tuesday, we've got a new uh, Infinix smartwatch launching, so again, should be bringing you a dedicated video on that bad boy. Uh, Wednesday, new Mobvoi Tick Watch. Uh, Thursday, HTC is doing some Vive shenanigans. Uh, and I think that's about it next week. So yeah, you can expect me to be in quite, quite the state come Friday for Techspert Weekly. Please do join me again uh, at noon for this shower of shit as always. Uh, please do bung your comments down below and we'll try and cover as many of those off in viewer comments as always. Thank you, thank you, thank you to everyone who commented last week. Apologies if didn't get onto yours because again, just so many lovely comments. Uh, impossible to cover them all without like a two hour extravaganza, which maybe I will do sometime if I actually have time. Anyhow, that's enough jabber from me. I'm hoping to get another video live tomorrow, but otherwise have yourselves a fantastic, lovely, wonderful weekend and I will see you all next week. Cheers everyone. Love you.